up in that high country during the summer, but you can't stay there during the winter. So you need to move down to the basins. And that's what you do if you're a mule deer in Wyoming. You know, when we look at these migrations, we're looking at generations of cultural knowledge. We make these maps, but if you lose the migration, and even if you know where the map is, you can't recreate it because it, it exists in their experience. As landscapes get developed, subdivisions go in, changes are happening to this landscape. A big question is how much can these animals tolerate? What's the winter range? Winter range is anywhere a deer decides to try to winter. Spent all my life out here. But I started way really young. My father gave me a camera when I was 14 and told me to go out and take stills of wildlife. Where I grew up, I could sit there and watch deer and elk and spend all my time doing that. That's the trouble. Most people just go out and observe the wildlife during the hunting season. I think you need to do it year round to understand the animals. Now those elk went over the top, so it's time to move out. They got tired of me talking. Matt Coffin, we got we had the opportunity to sit down with Matt, who is one of the leads on the Wyoming Migration Initiative. What's your takeaway from that conversation? What they're doing is is really great. So these deer there's a, aren't there's a buck. There's a buck right there. Let's talk about the, the migration initiative. What started it? Our group at the University of Wyoming, we're all wildlife biologists, we're researchers. We're doing all this migration research. And meanwhile, these migrations are getting a little more difficult every year. We just had this thought that we could do more to help educate the public and make it more useful to wildlife managers. Yeah, what, you've known about these migrations for a really, really long time. Let's talk about some of the stuff that you've seen Back when I was growing up, you were able to hunt in the corridors in November, and the season ran until the end of December on the winter ranges, if you can believe that. I learned how they, because you gotta leave tracks, and you just watch their tracks, and you can see where they were going, and it was very interesting too, because you could go along and suddenly you'd run out of tracks, so you know the migrational herd would sometimes they'd stop in areas. They wouldn't just all just suddenly be down there. They, it was a gradual thing. That was part of knowing how to hunt the deer. So I learned that. Every step towards winter range is a step towards horror food that you're gonna have to share with everybody else that's on that's down there. They they try to stay up in the high country as long as they can. It, it would have been impossible to figure this out with 100% surety without GPS technology. That's true. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, a lot of it is built on the fact that you can now collar these animals and those collars give you locations every couple hours for two to three or four years. And so then when you get that data back, you know, you have a really clear picture. Two little bucks standing right in the rocks, skyline. They look pretty healthy this year. We haven't had any below zero weather. It's really pretty nice, you know? We haven't done much work on males. We do see it doesn't take as much snow to push the does out of the high country. The bucks will stay up there longer. Back in those days when we could hunt, during November and December, as soon as it got 15 below or colder, it seemed like suddenly they all started showing up on the winter range. It mm -hmm. was like they flipped a switch. Then they, of course, have to eat several times a day. And, and you know, when it got 25 below, everybody showed up for mm -hmm. the party. I do know some of those bucks stay, uh, come out early because Popeye, he's very noticeable. And a, and a buddy of mine saw him the last year of his life within 15 miles of the winter range, 12th of November. That picture is taken on the western side of the Salt River Range. He had to go over that mountain range, down the other side, cross the Grays River, up over 
the Wyoming range and back down. Wintered around the Big Piney or something? Yeah, yeah, wintered down there by La Barge. Now, there was a lot of guys hunting Popeye that year in the high country, but nobody took him. Suddenly, in November on the winter range, here he shows up with that 41-inch outside spread. You know, nobody ever took Popeye. We had a bad April storm come in, and Popeye was 11 years old and just didn't make it. We look at these migrations, we're looking at generations and generations of cultural knowledge. Like Popeye, when he was a fawn, his mother took him over there into the Fall River Range. He did it two years in, and was in his gray matter, and that's that was home to him. <clears throat> the does teach him where to, how and where to go for the winter, and the bucks, kind of like as a fraternity, teach these bucks where to hang out in the summer. So they're the ones that are passing off the summer range. And if you shoot them all out, kill them whether it's late hunt or if they get all winter killed or whatever, it takes years and years and years. In fact, I know areas that have never come back. I mean, mule deer, they can deal with a fair bit of development. It's not that these corridors have to be pristine, but we don't want to cross sort of that tipping point. And unfortunately, we don't know where the tipping point is. We know migration is important. We know how to map the corridors. We know how to identify the threats. We have all these tools in the toolbox. It's all right there in front of us to be implemented to maintain the corridors. The solutions are clear and doable. And that's where the mapping comes in. It speaks to the efficiency of the conservation. And we've already seen them be implemented. So, so for the first time in 100 years, mule deer are showing up to the winter range and seeing an easier path than a harder path to where they're headed. Also, the game of fish is better able to manage their hunting seasons. Hunting these migratory animals is extremely dangerous. There isn't a Western state that has enough migrating deer. Yeah, a lot of the Western states are looking to the Wyoming example, mapping the migrations. The science is, is really guiding what we do, and this is a conservation issue that we should be able to win. Finally, it isn't just hearsay or me lecturing to people saying, yeah, well, I watched the old migration and those deer are down here on the winter range. I just kind of wish that it would have happened 25 years ago, but it happened now and it's, it's good. And we still have time. 